This is a trade conversation that a lot of Canadians fans probably don't want to have. But I do think it is interesting enough to talk about, because there's a lot of nuance here, with all the hype and all of the excitement that Habs fans have been feeling towards guys on the team, I felt like now is as good a time as any to bring up this thread on Twitter that I thought was very, very inspiring. This was tweeted out by Sean Hashim yesterday, and it's a very simple tweet. At the time of recording this audio, though, it's at 15,000 views, and it asks a question to the Montreal Canadiens fanbase that, honestly, kind of surprisingly, is very divisive in the replies. So I thought this was cool enough to go out there and make a video about it. Let's have a trade conversation surrounding some of the most important players on the team. Is Uri Slavkovsky more untouchable than Cole Caulfield? Like, in a wild, outlandish trade scenario where you must give up one, who are you giving up first? And you could see on the tweet there are 45 replies, 84 likes, a bunch of people went out there and shared their opinion about this, and interestingly enough, just scrolling through the entire thing over here, looking at what most Canadians fans are saying, I'm seeing a lot of diversity. It's not one way or the other, and that is what makes this conversation so appealing to me. Let's bring it up here on the channel. Who would you rather have if you had to trade one? Cole Caulfield or Uri Slavkovsky? The reason everybody is talking about this now is, of course, because of, firstly, Caulfield's extended level of success that we've been used to seeing ever since his University of Wisconsin Badgers days. And then, of course, you have Yuri Slavkovsky, who has bolstered up the power rankings of favorite Montreal Canadiens or Canadians who have impressed the past little while. He's been so good. And so much so that you could debate whether or not one is more valuable than the other. Before I give my opinion, let's go out there and see some of the replies. Sean says himself, I think I'm right there with Yuri Slavkovsky, man. Johnny P then replies saying they're both untouchable, although, who exactly would you be trading them for? You can't say untouchable depending on what the trade is. And it's more about which of the two you'd give up, let's say, hypothetically, it's for Connor Bedard or something. And it's funny the exchange that goes on afterwards, at that point you give them whoever you want, you're getting Bedard back. And no, Sean replies saying that's not the point of the question. The point is, really, in a hypothetical world, who would you say is more valuable, and who's the other guy that you would be more willing to trade? If it came down to it, your hands are tied behind your back, the fate of the universe on the line, the Martians have the death beam pointed at Earth, you better make a choice. I want Iguodala! Okay, no, that's the wrong clip. Um, sorry. This is a different debate. And the next reply that is noteworthy in this Twitter thread says, Unlike many, I understand what the question is that you're asking. Right now, I think it's still Caulfield. We know what he is. We know his floor. Slavkovsky might have the better ceiling due to a more rounded game, but his floor is lower than Cole's for now. One hot streak hasn't changed this. And don't take one hot streak the wrong way. I wanted Slavkovsky, I've been waiting for this, but you can't go off of small sample sizes. When Slavkovsky's hot streak ends and he goes through another slump, we need to see if he's still playing well even without the points. And I like how he points out at the beginning, yeah, I'm one of like the only people that actually understands what it is you're asking because a bunch of replies to this tweet go out there and say, hey, I'd rather trade a defenseman, I'd rather trade somebody else. Like, no, that's not the point of the question. The point of the question is, who is more untouchable, if you had to choose one? And one of the biggest things that's going out there in Slavkovsky's favor in these replies is pretty much everything surrounding just the physical profile. And no, I'm not just talking about size. We all know that Cole Caulfield is small and Yuri Slavkovsky is pretty big, but also age. The fact that Slavkovsky is 19 years old and the fact that Cole Caulfield is 23 years old. That's a pretty big difference here. And if you talk about the Canadians and their overall point scoring race in 2023-2024, the gap between Cole Caulfield and Yuri Slavkovsky isn't really that big. 
It's kind of big, but it's not that big. Slavkovsky currently has 30 points and Caulfield has 45. And if you wanted to get even more specific, let's cut this off to the start of the new year. Based off of what StatMuse went out there and said, because they're literally the easiest website to go out there and get these kind of stats, since January 1st, 2024, Nick Suzuki has collected the most points for the Canadians with 21. But second is Cole Caulfield, third is Slavkovsky. Slavkovsky has 17 points in 19 games ever since the turn of the calendar, which is just two behind Caulfield. And if you wanted to go even further, let's say January 31st rather than January 1st, you'll see that Slavkovsky has indeed been an over point per game guy. Suzuki has been almost a two point per game guy. Caulfield has been at a point per game, which is good too. It's just, you can understand that 10 points is better than 6 points. So, right now, Slavkovsky is in the hottest hot streak of his career. But, even though you could say that it's been so fantastic and so amazing, Cole Caulfield is right there, pretty much with slightly inferior point production that is still at a point per game rate. If you wanted to split apples and oranges, you could say that, yeah, there's more value in what Slavkovsky brings physically Therefore, you would rather keep him because he's producing the same, he's younger, and he's bigger. But I do think it's also a really interesting and noteworthy point to make that, yeah, Slavkovsky is playing the best hockey of his career. Cole Caulfield is not. Cole Caulfield is just having another season. Like, this is business for him. Business as usual. If Cole Caulfield produced these amount of numbers from now until the next three, four, five years, everybody would be like, really? That's it? Like, okay, we kind of know you're capable of that, but that's it? There's a ceiling to Cole Caulfield that everybody knows exists. It's just right now, he hasn't really been exhibiting that, and that's kind of okay. He's recovering from the shoulder thing. He's still taking his time. He's still scoring points, even though he's not maybe at 100% like he was a year or something ago, but he's still doing okay and his point production is right there with Slavkovsky. So when it comes to the debate of numbers versus the profile, it really is something that you could divide down the middle. You could give the edge to either of these two guys, one for Caulfield ceiling that we know he has at the NHL level, and the opposing one for Yara Slavkovsky's profile point production as of late and his size. But when you talk about individual skills, this is where things get a little bit different. Caulfield is the better scorer. I think a lot of people could agree with that. Slavkovsky plays on the boards. He plays more of a attacking the net kind of style. Caulfield is a lot more cerebral, I feel. And if he hits his peak, he could be continually getting 30, 40, 40, 40 goals every year. Slavkovsky could be in that, let's say, 25 to 30 range in a peak season, maybe even a tad higher if he's lucky. So if you wanted to talk about skills, they are different players, so it's tough to really differentiate that. But that's kind of why I thought this conversation was interesting, because if it were up to me, like if you had asked this question on January 1st, 2024, everybody would have said, OK, yeah, Caulfield. But now, now that we're actually seeing what Slavkovsky can do and how it's working at the NHL level, it's a lot easier to just scroll over to that side of the argument. And even if you would ask this question back at the start of the month, like, sure, you could say, yeah, we'd rather keep Caulfield. Like, he's more of the untouchable player compared to Slavkovsky. Would that necessarily mean that if Caulfield was eligible in the 2022 NHL entry draft, you would have taken him first overall over Slavkovsky? I don't know. Like, there's a very distinct kind of profile that exists in his game that makes it difficult to fully trust when he's only 5'7". But we know that he's good now because he's in the NHL. It's just, when you're talking about younger guys, age really does play a part into it. So for Slavkovsky being 19 and Caulfield being 23, maybe that's the dagger. Maybe that's the be-all and end-all argument that makes this known. So I'm asking the question to you based off of this Twitter thread by Sean Hashim. Big shout out over to him. But Martians have the death beam pointed at Earth. You have to make the shot. Who do you go? Iguodala or Steph Curry, because what, oh, never mind. Um, yeah, sorry, war flashbacks, they're coming into my mind again. Caulfield or Slavkovsky, who is the more untouchable player, who is the more untouchable asset? If the hockey gods were twisting your arm and you had to give up one of these guys, who do you give up and who do you keep? Well, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this video. And bye.